Hey everyone, and welcome to another deep dive with us. Today we're going to unpack the life and work of someone who really left his mark on the world of theoretical physics, Lev Landau. Oh yeah. And for this one, we're going to be using excerpts from a biography to guide us. So if you're all curious about the history of physics in the 20th century, or what it takes to be a truly groundbreaking scientist, mm -hmm. then you're in the right place. Landau wasn't just brilliant. And he certainly was that, but he was incredibly prolific. His work touches on almost every area of theoretical physics. It's like he just knew where to look, yeah. where all the most interesting problems were. Yeah. Let's just take, for example, the density matrix in quantum mechanics. Yeah. So you use this matrix to describe the statistical state of a quantum system. Now, what's amazing is that Landau independently co-discovered this method. Oh, wow. He saw the same fundamental need that others did, but he came at it from his own unique angle. So that's just one thing, this one example. We're just getting started. Okay. His work on superfluidity, which later won him the Nobel Prize, was revolutionary. Or the Ginzburg-Landau theory of superconductivity, which is still used today to understand how some materials can conduct electricity with zero resistance. These are cornerstones of modern physics. It's honestly kind of mind-boggling how one person could contribute so much. So let's rewind a little bit. Okay. Landau's journey begins in 1908 in Baku, Azerbaijan. And it's a story that starts with a child prodigy. Absolutely. Right. Can you imagine mastering calculus by age 13? Yep. Yeah. That was Landau. Oh. But this early brilliance presented its own challenges. He was too young for university at 13, so he spent a year at technical school. I can't even imagine being that smart and having to wait hmm. to go to university. I know, right? Before entering Baku State University at the ripe old age of 14, and get this, he initially studied physics, mathematics, and chemistry simultaneously. Wow, a triple major. Did he keep up with all three? He eventually dropped chemistry, though his interest in the field never completely vanished. But physics, that's where his true passion resided. This led him to Leningrad, which was the heart of Soviet physics at that time. But it was his time abroad that truly shaped his approach to physics. Between 1929 and 1931, Landau studied with giants like Niels Bohr in Copenhagen, Paul Dirac in Cambridge, and Wolfgang Pauli in Zurich. Oh my goodness, talk about an all-star lineup. So how did these encounters shape his thinking? He considered Niels Bohr the father of quantum mechanics a lifelong mentor. The time that he spent with Bohr in Copenhagen solidified his own rigorous approach to theoretical physics. It was about finding the underlying elegance and mathematical beauty in the laws of nature. After this European adventure, Landau returned to the Soviet Union specifically to Kharkiv in Ukraine, where he headed a theoretical physics department. And this is where the famous Landau School was born. Right, exactly. But to become part of Landau's inner circle wasn't easy. He had incredibly high standards and developed a notoriously difficult exam called the theoretical minimum. Think of it as a physics gauntlet. Between 1934 and 1961, only 43 people passed this grueling test. Wow. I bet those 43 people were some of the best physicists in the world. Absolutely. Landau was intensely rigorous, but he was also deeply committed to nurturing the next generation of physicists. Those who passed his exam became part of a unique intellectual lineage. They didn't just learn physics from him, they learned a way of thinking about the universe. Sadly, Landau's career wasn't all smooth sailing. He faced a major setback in 1938. It was a chilling reminder of the political realities of the time. Landau was arrested by the NKVD the Soviet secret police on charges of anti-Stalinist activities. Oh no, what happened? This was a period of great political repression and fear in the Soviet Union. And even brilliant scientists like Landau weren't immune to the paranoia of the regime. So how did he escape this? It took the intervention of a fellow physicist, Pyotr Kapitsa, who was highly influential and respected. Kapitsa personally vouched for Landau and even threatened to resign from his own position if Landau wasn't released. Wow, talk about putting it all on the line. That shows incredible courage and a real bond between them. And this brings us to another crucial point in Landau's life, his research on superfluidity, which is directly connected to Kapitza's own work and ultimately led to that Nobel Prize. Kapitza had discovered this bizarre phenomenon in liquid helium. Okay. Essentially, when cooled below a certain temperature, liquid helium starts behaving in ways that defy the laws of classical physics. Really? It flows without any resistance, climbs up walls. It's Truly strange stuff. That's crazy. So Kapitza found this phenomenon, but no one could explain it. Exactly. It was a puzzle that stumped the best minds in physics. But then Landau came along. He developed a mathematical theory to describe superfluidity, introducing groundbreaking concepts like phonons and rotons. What are those? 
Think of them as collective excitations in the liquid helium, like waves in the ocean. But these waves are quantized, meaning they come in discrete packets of energy. Landau's insight was that these phonons and rotons are the key to understanding the bizarre behavior of superfluid helium. So that won him the Nobel Prize in 1962. Precisely. His theory not only explains superfluidity, but it also opened up new avenues for understanding quantum liquids and other systems with many interacting particles. It was truly a pivotal moment in the history of physics. It's so tragic then, that in the same year that he won the Nobel Prize, yeah. 1962, Landau's life took another dark turn. A horrific car accident left him with severe injuries and in a coma for two months. Oh, wow. I can't imagine. He fought hard to recover physically, but tragically, his scientific creativity was never the same. That's heartbreaking. So we've talked about this incredible genius and some of his major contributions to physics, but what was Landau like as a person? I'm kind of curious about the man behind the science. He was known for his sharp wit and strong opinions. He even had a system for ranking physicists on a scale of zero to five based on their perceived genius and contributions to the field. Wait, seriously, what ranking did Einstein get? Einstein the father relativity was actually a 0.5 on Landau's scale. No way. Newton the giant, on whose shoulders we all stand, received the coveted zero ranking. As for Landau himself, he modestly placed himself at a 2.5 initially, later upgrading himself to a 2. I love that. So we've covered Landau's early life, his journey through academia, his time abroad, and even a glimpse into his personality. But we've only scratched the surface of his scientific contribution. That's right. Next, we'll delve deeper into some of his specific contributions to different areas of physics like Fermi liquid theory and Landau damping, and explore why his legacy continues to be so influential today. Expert speaker. We just finished talking about the highs and lows of Landau's career, but I'm ready to dive into some more of his work now. I, I know you mentioned Fermi liquid theory earlier. Yeah. What is that? Fermi liquid theory is one of Landau's most elegant contributions to physics. It's all about understanding systems with a huge number of interacting particles. Okay. So think of like the electrons in a metal. They're all crammed together, constantly bumping into each other and influencing each other's movement. Right. That sounds incredibly complicated. How can you even begin to make sense of something like that? That's where Landau's brilliance comes in. He realized that instead of trying to track the individual motions of all of these particles, which is impossible, you can think of them as quasi-particles. Quasi-particles, what are those? Imagine each electron putting on a special suit okay. that incorporates the average effect of all its interactions with its neighbors. That's essentially what a quasi-particle is, like a dressed up version of the original particle. Mm. That simplifies the whole picture. So you're replacing like a messy, tangled web of interactions with these quasi-particles. Right. And what's remarkable is that by using this quasi-particle concept, Landau was able to develop a theory that accurately describes the behavior of these systems, even at very low temperatures where quantum effects become dominant. So does this have like real-world applications? Oh, absolutely. Fermi liquid theory is crucial for understanding the properties of metals, superconductors and even the incredibly dense matter found inside neutron stars. It's a powerful tool that has had a profound impact on many areas of physics. Wow, okay, so that's Fermi liquid theory. What other major contributions did he make? I know you mentioned second order phase transitions. Right, this is another area where Landau's work was truly groundbreaking. Phase transitions are all around us. Okay. Think of water freezing into ice or a magnet losing its magnetism when heated. Landau developed a general theory to describe these transitions, specifically those known as second-order phase transitions. What makes a second-order phase transition special? So in these transitions, the properties of a material change abruptly, but without any latent heat involved. Think of it as a smooth, continuous change in the system's order. Okay, so Landau's theory provided a framework for understanding these transitions. Right, and it has applications in materials, science, cosmology, and even particle physics. So we've talked about systems with lots of particles like the electrons in a metal did landau ever work on like even stranger states of matter like plasmas he did indeed plasma is often called the fourth state of matter it's a superheated electrically charged gas okay that's found in stars and lightning and even fluorescent lights yeah landau made significant contributions to understanding plasma physics especially a phenomenon known as landau damping landau damping that sounds interesting what exactly is being damped? Imagine you create a wave in a plasma. Okay. You might expect this wave to keep oscillating forever, but in reality, it often loses energy and dies out. The surprising thing is that this damping can happen even without any collisions between particles. How is that possible? How can it lose energy without collisions? 
It is. And that's why Landau's discovery was so important. He showed that the wave can transfer its energy to the particles in the plasma, even without direct collisions. It's a subtle effect that arises from the collective behavior of the charged particles. It's like a phantom force that just comes and steals the energy. That's a good way to think about it. And this understanding of Landau damping is crucial for many areas of plasma physics, including nuclear fusion research and astrophysics. Okay, so we've got Fermi liquids, phase transitions, and plasmas. What about superconductivity? Didn't Landau work on that too? He certainly did. Together with Vitaly Ginzburg, he developed the Ginzburg-Landau theory of superconductivity. This theory explains how some materials can conduct electricity with zero resistance at very low temperatures. Superconductivity has always kind of felt like science fiction to me. What's so special about it? So the lack of resistance means that electric currents can flow without any energy loss. This has incredible potential for various technologies from energy transmission to levitating trains. Okay, so Landau's work helped to make superconductivity less of a futuristic fantasy and more of a scientific reality. Exactly. The Ginsburg-Landau theory has been instrumental in guiding experimental research and the development of new superconducting materials. It's really impressive how Landau's work has had such a lasting impact on our understanding of the universe hmm. and our ability to use its power. And we're still not done. I know he even made contributions to particle physics. That's right. In the world of the very small, Landau proposed the two-component theory of neutrinos. Okay. Neutrinos are these elusive particles that barely interact with matter, and understanding them is crucial for probing the fundamental building blocks of the universe. It's amazing to me how Landau's work spans such a wide range of topics. He really is like the Mozart of physics, just composing all these theories and insights in every area. Yeah, it's a fitting analogy. And what's even more remarkable is that his work wasn't just about producing complex equations. It was about finding deep, elegant explanations for how the universe works. He had this incredible ability to cut through complexity mm -hmm. and identify the key principles at play. So from the vastness of plasmas to the tiny world of neutrinos, Landau's work has left an indelible mark on physics. But his impact extends beyond his scientific achievements. What about his legacy as a teacher and mentor? Didn't he shape a whole generation of physicists? Absolutely. Landau wasn't just a brilliant physicist. He was also a passionate teacher who cultivated a distinct scientific culture. That's what we'll explore next. We've been talking about Landau's scientific achievements. But what about his influence on other physicists? Like, how did he shape the next generation of scientists? His impact on the culture of physics, especially in the Soviet Union, is immense. We talked about the Landau School earlier, and I think it's key to understanding his legacy. It wasn't just a place, it was a whole philosophy of physics education. Landau had incredibly high standards and believe in rigorous theoretical foundations. Well, he had that infamous theoretical minimum exam that only 43 people passed in almost 30 years. Yeah. Sounds intense. It covered all areas of theoretical physics. Landau wanted to ensure his students had a deep and comprehensive understanding of the field. But it wasn't just about memorizing equations. He instilled in his students a way of thinking, a critical and creative approach to problem solving. So it was about cultivating a certain scientific mindset, a way of approaching problems with rigor and clarity. Precisely. His students didn't just learn physics from him. They learned how to think like physicists. And this emphasis on deep understanding and rigorous thinking became a hallmark of the Landau School. His students went on to make significant contributions in various fields, carrying that torch of intellectual excellence. It's like he created a scientific dynasty, this lineage of brilliant physicists who trace their intellectual heritage back to him. That's a great way to put it. And his influence extends beyond his direct students. Landau was a prolific writer. He co-authored a monumental 10-volume course of theoretical physics with his former student Avzeni Lifshitz. These books are considered classics renowned for their clarity, depth, and comprehensiveness. They cover virtually every major area of theoretical physics, from mechanics and electrodynamics to quantum mechanics and statistical physics. I've heard they're basically required reading for any serious physics student. They are. They're used in universities worldwide and continue to influence generations of physicists. What's remarkable is how Landau distilled complex ideas into a coherent and accessible form. It's a testament to his incredible breadth of knowledge and his gift for explaining intricate concepts. It's like he condensed the entire universe of theoretical physics into those 10 volumes. It's quite a feat, and it speaks to his lasting legacy. Landau's work transcended borders and political ideologies. It's a contribution to the global scientific community. His influence continues to shape the way we understand the universe.
We've talked about this brilliant scientist, this demanding but inspiring teacher, this prolific author. What do you think is his most significant contribution? Like, is it a specific theory or a teaching style mm. or something else entirely? That's a tough one. It's tempting to point to Fermi liquid theory, his work on superfluidity or any number of his groundbreaking theories. But I think his most enduring legacy might be the Landau School itself. He created an environment where intellectual curiosity thrived, where rigorous thinking was celebrated, and where collaborative problem solving was the norm. So it wasn't just his scientific contributions, mm -hmm. but the whole culture of physics that he shaped. Exactly. He fostered a unique approach to science, one based on deep understanding, clarity of thought, and a relentless pursuit of truth that's a powerful legacy that continues to inspire scientists today. It's been so fascinating exploring Landau's life and work, and I feel like we've only just scratched the surface. There's always more to learn, and that's perhaps the best takeaway from Landau's life. Never stop questioning, never stop exploring, and never stop pushing the boundaries of knowledge. Well said. If Landau were here today, what one question would you ask him? It's something to ponder as we finish our deep dive into the life and legacy of this remarkable physicist. Thanks for joining us. It's been a pleasure. Until next time, keep exploring.